By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back in Hilversum, the Netherlands. We're going to watch a round number four match between Filco, who's on a mono red gauntlet deck. It's a beautiful, beautiful deck, Filco, that you've built. I'm looking forward to discuss it in the deck deck section. And you're taking on Hank, and Hank is playing Line Dip Bolt. So a very fierce deck, uh, considered, I guess, a tier one strategy. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see an original brew versus like one of those strong tier one brews to see who's going to come up uh, on top after this matchup. Now, before I start with uh, discussing the decks, I would first like to mention that, as always, you can also choose to skip that section of the video. I know some people enjoy going to the match first, check out the deck decks later. The easiest way to do this is by uh, using the uh, timestamps in the description below. There you will find a timestamp named MTG Games. If you click on there, it'll take you straight to the games, to the actual action. And here I'm going to continue with the deck deck section. I'm going to start with the deck of Filco. It's actually called Gauntlet of Filco. I like it. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Vilco. So the name is Gauntlet of Vilco. And, you know, I ask this question often to myself and also to other players is why do you play old school magic? And decks like these are the reason why I love to play old school magic. These cards are beautiful and it's so thematic. You know, to me, it makes sense. You're a red mage. You've got your Orcish Aura Flame. You've got your Gauntlet uh, of Might. You've got those little orc creatures. It, it all like fits together. You've got the thralls. I mean, I, I can see a wizard here. I can see a wizard casting these spells, learning these spells as he lives in the mountains, right? It, it completely makes sense. Uh, when we look at what the deck wants to do, so get a little bit away from the beautiful flavor of the deck, it actually is a pretty good deck as well. We've got Gauntlet of Might, which is, which is an artifact for four that reads all red creatures gain plus one plus one and all mountains provide an extra red mana when they're tapped, right? So that's pretty cool, especially if your opponent doesn't play red, which is unfortunately not the case in this matchup, but then it's, of course, extra good. And then we've got Orcish Aura Flame that really fits this strategy as well because this is an enchantment that says attacking creatures you control get plus one, plus oh. So you're really beefing up your creatures. So that means you want to have a really nice, like, creature base, right? You want to have kind of that sly base. So he's starting with Goblin uh, Balloon Brigade for one. Then he goes into uh, the Orcs for two. Then he's got often Trolls for three. And, of course, he's got those Bull Lightnings for three. Now, Bull Lightning could be very powerful in this build right if you've got a gauntlet and you've got a orcish or flame out it gets a power bonus of plus two so then it's already eight trample damage and so forth like th these guys can get strong very quickly talking about that on the number four casting cost spot we see the dragon whelps i think dragon whelps are fantastic in this strategy because of those gauntlet gauntlets of might because remember they double your red mana so the dragon whelp is a two three flyer right and for one red you can give it plus one plus oh you can do that three times if you do it more than that because you can then the dragon whelp is destroyed at the end of the turn but that doesn't really matter does it i mean you can just blow it up if your opponent's dead if it's not going to make it till the end of the turn who cares and i think it's great the gauntlet of uh, of might combined with the uh, the Dragon Whelp, because Gauntlet of Might also gets plus one, plus one, meaning your whelps get out of the, the bolt range, so they become four toughness, and, you know, you can pump them up so easily with the mountain stepping for double red, so I think it's great. Then a card I haven't mentioned yet is Itwin Ifrit, which is just a fantastic card. It doesn't see a lot of play, probably because it's quite rare and quite costly. It's three red to cast for a, um, a three six that can just attack, but when, when it blocks, you have to flip a coin, right? But... This card is really good for attacking because with the six toughness, it's hard, hard to kill in a block. It still has three power. If you add the aura flame to it, it's got four power. It will kill most creatures of the opponent because the biggest creatures usually at your opponent's side are like four, four toughness. So it, it, it's really, really, really good. I think this deck, I, I love the theme, but I also love what it does. An obvious problem for this deck is a circle of protection red, right? That's really a problem for this deck. So maybe in the sideboard, I would have added some Nefneral's Discs to deal with that. But, you know, who am I? I wonder, maybe, Philco, you can let me know in the comments below. Did it happen a lot to you that you ran into a COP Red? I wonder if Hank, his opponent today, has a COP Red. As a matter of fact, let's take a look at the deck of Hank and see if he does. And here we see the deck that Hank is playing with today. So it's a line dip with bolts in it. And that's a, a strategy we see more often now. Of course, line dip can be played quite aggressively for Savannah lines. Only two surrender Pafrits, by the way. So it's more line bolt, a little bit dip. 
Um, but this deck can play very aggressively. And of course, having uh, red there for lightning bolts and chain lightnings makes it even more aggressive. Also, he's playing with four psionic blasts. So this is almost a direct damage deck. And then he's combining that with those amazingly powerful power cards and white solution cards, right? Disenchants, only one sorts to plowshares. Why only one, you may wonder, because you don't want to give your opponent life, right? That's not what this deck is about, but maybe a one-off when you have a demonic tutor in your deck as well. One-offs are usually quite good. Uh, we see a balance in the deck, a mind twist, of course. But what I think worries me for Filco playing against this deck is yes it's very strong but also there's a lot of tempo in here I mean he's got Sol Ring, all the Moxen, he's got Black Lotus and that's going to help him catapult himself into the match he's simply going to go faster probably than Filco and Filco has to play catch up the entire matchup I think and I'm kind of focusing on Filco a little bit because he's playing with the original deck so I always kind of like to look at that more and see does he have a chance I think what's going to be tough for Philco is that that huge tempo that Hank has here in his deck. There's no COP red, by the way, in the sideboard of Hank. So that's good news for Philco. But I mean, overall, this deck is just looking so strong and so fierce. It's going to be really tough for him. Philco will need like a perfect day with his deck. And Hank will need to kind of stumble upon a lot of lands or no lands or, you know, or only finding power cards and not a lot of threats. Maybe, you know, that could help Foco a little bit. But my point is here that, you know, he needs a perfect day, Hank needs a bad day, and then Foco stands a chance. But I think looking at both of the decks, Hank is really a favorite here. But now that I say this, I'm kind of zooming in on his mana base. And I mean, if I look at this mana base, there are no basic lands in the mana base. And remember, Foco is playing with Blood Moon's main. So that could be an opening. I mean, I'm kind of getting excited about this match. I mean, Foco has some weapons. Hank's got more weapons. But, I mean, he's got a chance. He's got a fighting chance. I believe in that. Anyway, this is the deck of Hank. We've looked at the deck of Foco. Enough of my rambling. Let's go to the match. Round number four at the Hill Giant Cup number four. Game number one in round number four at the Hill Giant Cup. Here we go. On the left, we have Philco, who's playing a mono red deck, Gauntlet of Philco. Starting here with a Goblin Balloon Brigade, passing the turn to Hank, who's on Line Dip Bolt. He's playing primarily white, blue, and red in his deck, but also a little bit of black to splash in the Demonic Tutor. There we see a card to uh, cast those uh, black spells, the Mox Jet, to cast the Demonic Tutor, and of course that horrible Mind Twist. Hank starting with the Savannah Lines, so both players having a creature on the board. Philco tapping two here, I'm tapping again. Perhaps he's got an Iron Claw Orc in hand. We can see little bits of his hand every now and then. I believe there's also an uh, Orcish Aura Flame in there. There's a Shatter on the Mox Jet. And choosing, is he gonna attack here? That's the next question. I guess not passing the turn, choosing not to, which makes sense, I think. I think it's a good move in this uh, scenario. Passing the turn to Hank. It looks like he's got some options. There's another duel, a Volcanic Island. And he's just passing the turn, so also not Wanting to trade the line for the Balloon Brigade. Perhaps waiting on a bolt to bolt the Balloon Brigade and just attack. Three mana here for Filco. He's got a lot of three drops in his deck. Ooh, he's giving the Balloon Brigade flying, attacking for one. Hank dropping to 19, then tapping two. There's an Iron Claw Orc. Now remember, the Iron Claw Orc cannot block any creatures with power greater than one, so it cannot block the Savannah line, I believe. I mean, orcs are cowards. It's very flavorful. There's another card drawn here by uh, by Hank, of course, for his uh, draw step, and then playing a Mox Ruby, attacking here with the line. Philco dropping to 18. There's a time walk. This is good because now he can also attack with the factory if he wants to. So untapping, taking on his extra turn, and these are the power cards that makes it so tough for an underpowered deck like Philco's to play against the power deck. There's the attack. He's going to take four more damage. Going to drop to 14. There's another line. More pressure onto the board. And a pass. And Philco here drawing for turn. There's another mountain, I believe. Going to tap three. What is he going to do? Are we going to see a bull lightning? Oh, there's an often troll. Oi, oi, oi. One red to regenerate this 2-2 two, two for three mana. Which is actually quite good at the current board state. There's some nice altar on there as well. 
I think if I'm Philco, I would just attack with the Iron Claw Orc. And I would keep the Goblin Balloon Brigade at bay because it's quite a good blocker against the Savannah Lines. Let's see what he can do. Apparently they're talking about the history of the altar, which is important, I get it. But I'm also curious to see what's his next move. He can attack here with the Iron Claw Orc and I don't think Hank is gonna block it. He'll just take two, he'll drop to 17. Also interesting to see if he's gonna attack with the Goblin Balloon Brigade. Like I said, I think I would keep it at bay as a blocker. He did that earlier at turn one. And here we go. So we see Philco attacking with the Iron Claw Orc and the Goblin Balloon Brigade. Now let's see how Hank is going to block. Of course, keeping that one mana open to regenerate the often troll. There's the block on the line. So trading the line for the Iron Claw and taking a damage from the Balloon Brigade, dropping to 18. And then there's a pass turn. Three cards in hand here for Hank. What is he gonna do? One of the options that he has is attacking with the line, then if Philco uh, blocks with the troll, he regenerates, and then afterwards he can play a bolt on it or a chain lightning. That is gonna be a two for one though, but it could be an option. Looks like Philco taking the damage though, dropping to 12. No staying on 14, blocking here, regenerating the troll so the line's dead. Or are we now going to see that play that I discussed earlier? Does he have a bolt or a chain? He almost has to, right? Blocking the, uh, tapping the ruby here. Yeah, there's the bolt. Ooh, no, there's a, a balance. So went for bolt to the face of Philco on 11, then play a balance. Wow, that is such a power move. That is such a power move. I mean, this balance changes everything. Also because Hank, you know, keeps his Mishra's factory. And Philco lost so much there. Three creatures and a land. There's the untap. Two cards in hand. There's the animate and the attack for two. Philco dropping to nine. And there's a pass. A shatter in hand there for Philco from the top of the deck that could be useful next turn when Hank's gonna animate again and attack probably. No, it's going to play Sarah Angel for five. Yep, there's the Sarah Angel. Four, four, flyer. This is a problem. When you're playing red, that's always a problem because you've got Chain Lightning, you've got Lightning Bolt. It's all three damage and the a Angel has four toughness. If he now has a Fireball, that would be ideal for him. Just a Fireball for four on the Angel. It looks like he doesn't passing the turn. I mean, this is going to be tough here for Philco. Remember, he does have to Shatter if Hank animates the factory. Hank just attacking for four, putting Philco on five, it seems, exactly. And that's it. Yeah, having a Bolt and a Psionic Blast in hand. So that's the end of the road here for Philco. I, I feel like he really got done in by that beautiful balance play by Hank. That was really a good moment in the game to use that balance. And yeah, it's just so hard to get back from that, you know. After a balance, wipes your entire board. Anyway, this was just game one. That's the good news. Both players are going to dive into their sideboards. And we're going to uh, catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. So it's Philco again on the play after losing that first game. Starting with a mountain and again a goblin balloon brigade. And passing the turn. Also has an Iron Star coming in from the sideboard, it seems. That's really cool tech. Oh, but look at this. A Library of Alexandria turned one here for Hank. That is so brutal. I'm really hoping here that Philco can find a Blood Moon very, very quickly in the game. There's a star. So that means he's going to get some life. Exactly. And a well-deserved fist bump by Hank. I mean, it's beautiful to see a card like this hitting the board. And uh, what it does is every time you cast, somebody casts a red spell, you can pay one to gain one life. There we see Hank dropping to 19 because of the attack from the Goblin. And I believe eight cards in the hand now for Hank, so he's got to drop one, and then he can use the library if he wants to. But I mean, this library is going to make it so difficult. Philco has to find a Blood Moon next turn. There's his Havana Lines. Untapping, drawing for turn. Go Blood Moon! 
It looks like he wants to tap three though. I'm trying to look in his hand. He's got an it win or freet. I don't really see a blood moon, but it's hard to see his hand. Tapping three. Are we gonna see the three six Jin? First the attack for one. Hang taking the damage, gonna drop to 18, and there's the it winner freet. Unfortunately, no blood moon, but still it's a good card. It's the three six. And I mean, if you don't draw into an answer to the library, the other strategy that you can do, and actually kind of the only strategy, right, is just being super aggressive, keep attacking, Hank kind of forcing him to play out more cards than just uh, uh, the, the two cards a turn. But that's really tough, though. Another option is discard, but being a mono red, there's no discard here for Philco. And Hank here... Counting his amount of cards, I believe there's still eight in there or not. I guess there's seven, so using it now to draw card number eight. Having a white man open swords to plowshares on the Edwin. That is unfortunate. It only has one swords in the deck, but found it here for the Edwin. Attacking here with the line. That means he's going to go up to 23, then drop to 21 again. And there's a demonic tutor to make matters even worse. Insult over injury. And Hank is just finding everything right now. One of the options that he has is just find Ancestral Recall, draw even more cards. He could get a Mind Twist, which would be really ugly. Because then he would, you know, twist the hand of Fulco and he would have a Loa active. That would probably be the best move, but also, yeah. Not the greatest for us as viewers, but remember this is tournament magic. We'll just have to wait and see how ruthless Hank is. Going through his hand, seven in hand, passing the turn. There's the untap with the balloon brigade. Blood moon, show me a blood moon. There's an often troll. No blood moon, unfortunately. Still a good card though. For one red, he can regenerate. There's the attack with the brigade. I mean, at least that little goblin's doing work. Three damage already. Hank's now on 17. He had the star not doing a lot of work yet, but it makes sense that Filco wants to keep the red open to regenerate the often troll. There we see a plateau. Now I wonder, did he look up that mind twist? I mean, if he's got seven in hand, he should first, of course, activate the Loa draw into card number eight. That's exactly what he's gonna do here. Or is he? Yeah, exactly, gonna draw card eight, right? Right, okay, card number eight. I'm expecting a mind twist here. No, Suchi, okay. I'm liking this, Hank. I like the fact that you didn't look up a mind twist. I don't know what card you did look up, but it's good to see it's not a mind twist or else you definitely would have twisted Filco's hand here. And uh, Filco finding another red source. Tapping three. There's another it winner freet. And gaining a life with the star, you did it! That's like one of those bucket list magic accomplishments. Activating one of those colored life gain artifacts. That is super sweet. They're quite good in alpha, by the way, because, because of the alpha wording and when you're playing alpha rules, you can use them as often as you want when you, somebody plays, in this case, a red, uh, red spell. Which is pretty funny. Pretty broken as well. And then when you combine those with Gauntlets of Might and you've got even more mana, you can, you know, gain more life from it. But anyway, that's Alpha. We're not playing Alpha rules today. We have Hank here, 17 life points with a Suchi and a Savannah line on the board. And actually, I mean, Philco has some good defense. The big, the big elephant here in the room is, of course, at Library of Alexandria, and the huge amount of cards that Hank has already drawn this turn because of it, or not this turn, I mean this second game. The card advantage, advantage is huge here. 
voor Henk. I mean, the best line of play for him here is, uh, you know, just draw a card with the Loa and try to find a Sarah Angel and just fly over. I do believe he's playing with like four Sarahs. Yeah, so drawing a card. Tapping five. Are we going to see a Sarah Angel? There's the Sarah Angel. Yeah, I mean, this is this is perfect for him. He can just fly over next turn, deal four points of damage a turn, focus on 22, so that's going to take him six turns. And of course, he's got a lot of burn. Remember, four psionic blasts, th uh, four bolts, four chain lightning. So he's going he's gonna to finish it quite quickly, I think. Tapping three. Are we now going to see the Blood Moon? No, it's a bull lightning. That's fun, though. It's not what I expected. It's fun. And this is good timing by Philco because Hank is tapped out, so he cannot respond with a lightning bolt, which I think is kind of a flavor fill. Don't you agree? A lightning bolt on a bull lightning? It should give like a plus three, plus O oh to the bull lightning instead of kill it. But okay. And there's a life gain again from the star. Second life gain by the star. That's so sweet. There's the attack. 6-1 Trample Haste. Card from the dark. Look at that Hank taking all the damage. Dropping to 11. That's kind of sweet. I mean, the dream, I used to play this card with, with Bloodlust, and then the dream was to also Berserk it. Because then you can deal 20 damage with one attack. There's the pass. There's a Savannah. Activation here by the Library of Alexandria. Attack for four. Philco's going to drop here to 19. And is there going to be a pass or no? It looks like Hank still wants to do something. Going to tap. There's a soul ring. There's a tap for three. Okay, there's a surrender per free. So even more pressure there. Problem here for Philco is that the surrender has flying. The only thing that Philco here has got going for him is, is the fact that Hank's on 11, which is almost half of his life. And I mean, he is on red, so if he can just keep finding burn from the top of his deck, you know, that's at least would be my strategy. Just try to burn Hank out. Okay, there's a bull lightning. I would just cast it, go for it. Exactly. Just see what you can do. If there's a bolt in hand of Hank, there's a bolt in hand. I mean, you got to play it towards your outs. Gonna gain a life again with the star. This is really funny. So that's activation number three from the star. Attacking here with the Edwin. Just attacking with basically everything here. Yeah, there's a lightning bolt on the bull lightning. I mean, it's a flavor fill, but it works. And I mean, now... It's really simple to block, right? I would go surrender probably on the often and I mean Suchi on the Itwin. I wouldn't block with the Sarah because if he has a combat trick, you don't want to lose your Sarah Angel. So kind of Hank thinking about, you know, how to block this. And I do recognize this when you have these Loa games and, you know, I've had them too, you're so far ahead, you're like... I don't want to lose. So you start playing even slower because you know you've got such a big advantage, you start thinking more. Because you're like, if I lose this, I'm, I've really made a big mistake. So we'll just have to wait and see what Hank's going to do here. It looks like he's taking some damage. That surprises me a little bit. Taking two points of damage and dropping to nine. Ancestral Recall, I'll make it matters even worse here for Philco. But I mean, Philco actually accomplished what he wanted to do with this attack, that is at least just deal some damage to Hank. And I mean, he did, he's now on nine, so he's only three bolts away from victory. That's the way I look at it. And there's no life gain in, in the deck of, of Hank. Taking a damage here from his own surrender. Gonna drop to eight. 
I mean, you never know. Always got to play according to your outs. And yes, you know, you're going to get a lot of damage here, but you still have your Goblin Balloon Brigade to, to block. If, if I would be Hank here, I would just go, I guess, all in in the, in the attack, perhaps. Also depends on how much burn he's got in hand. I mean, it could be over, actually, in this turn. Because remember, Hank's got eight cards in hand. He's playing four Psionic Blasts. He's playing Bolts and, and Chain Lightnings. And I believe even a Fireball. So there's a pretty big chance the game's over at the end of this turn. Even though Phil goes still on 20. So I know that sounds weird, but there's so much direct damage in the deck of Hank. So Hank really thinking here, if I tap and go all in for an Alpha Strike, can I then actually finish it? So remember, Filco only having one blocker. So he could block, for example, the Sarah Angel, then he would take nine damage. Only attacking here with the Flyers, though. So there's an interesting moment here for Filco. Looks like he's going to give it flying and block the Sarah Angel, exactly, using it as a chump blocker. Taking three points of damage from the Surrendip. So he's going to drop to 17. And let's see what Hank's going to do in his second main. There's a bolt on the often troll. Of course, no red mana open anymore to give it regeneration. That is unfortunate for Filco. Seven in hand, I believe, here for Hank. So probably a pass turn. Could consider going down to... Uh, to six cards. Nope, there's the pass. I mean, he needs direct damage. Fireball to the dome would be ideal. There's another often troll, so it's at least a blocker. I wonder what that last card in hand is. Maybe it's just a mountain. Could gain a life here from the start. That's exactly what he does. Gonna go back up to 18 again. Going to play the other mountain and pass the turn. So no cards in hand anymore for Filco. And here we see Hank think, does he want to play some burn at the end of the turn? I mean, if you have it in hand, just do it. I would just play it. But then again, if you play Psy Blast, you're also dealing two damage to yourself. I think we're going to see a Psyonic Blast here. That would mean Hank would go down to six. That is kind of risky, actually. There is a Psyonic Blast. Ooh, he's on six, so only two bolts away. The obvious problem here, of course, for um, for Filco here is that, I mean, he's got no cards in hand. But how cool would it be if Filco can survive one more time, and if he can find, uh, dropping to five now, by the way, because of the surrender, but if he can find a Wheel of Fortune, you know, that would be fantastic. And then, of course, he's got to find a burn spell. Well, actually, a mountain and a fireball would be enough. Actually, a fireball would be enough because he's got enough mana now. So this is super interesting, right? But I think he's not going to survive this. There's the attack for seven. So he's going to drop to seven. There's a fireball. Exactly. There's the fireball ending this here. Game number two. And that means that Hank is going to win here round number four of the Hill Giant Cup. Congratulations, Hank. And that was the episode for today. So if you enjoy this tournament and you want to see more of it, stay tuned because right here on Timmy Talks, I will be showing you the entire tournament all the way up to the finals. So we've got a lot of cool matches to go and I will upload them every single week. So if you're not a subscriber yet, please hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Great, great, great. And if you're already a sub, thank you so much. Then please consider liking, sharing, and commenting on this video. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And then you can also uh, decide to become a patron of the show via patreon.com slash timmytalks. And uh, that really, really means a lot to me because uh, with your support, I can continue making videos. So please consider becoming a Patreon. Check out patreon.com slash timmytalks. You can already support the channel starting with just $1 a month. And for that dollar, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord and your name will be mentioned at the end of every single video in the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll. Watch